The question that everyone is wanting to know is what is the cost of living in San Antonio? And in today's video, I'm gonna give you all of the details and answer whatever questions I think you might have. So be sure to keep watching. San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the country, but we are still 10.9% below the national average of cost of living or just somewhere to live. That's pretty impressive just because we've been growing as fast as we have. I am Patricia Escobedo and every week I share videos about what it's like to live, work, play, and love your life in San Antonio. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button along with the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Every week I have families reaching out who are wanting to know what it's like to live here and I absolutely love it. So if that's something that you're wanting to know or you're thinking about moving to the area, be sure to shoot me an email, send me a text, give me a call, slide into my DMs, however you want to get a hold of me, I've got your back when moving to San Antonio. I have a ton of my very lovely California families that I have been working with over the last year or so and it's been pretty exciting, but I wanted to also go into detail about the common questions that I have from them and just really what I've experienced in this last couple of months of really just having a lot of families reaching out just through YouTube and it's just been absolutely amazing, but I wanna go ahead and get into this video and give you guys all the details and go over literally everything that you would want to know about living here and really the cost of living. So. Um, I do have my notepad in hand today, so just a lot of information to try to remember and not have it written down. So I will go ahead and get started with it. And the first thing I'm gonna go into is going to be the average cost of homes. And of course, because I'm in this industry and I am in real estate day in and day out, I have a pretty good understanding of what everything is going for, what to expect with this market. Um, as of 2021, it's been pretty crazy. Um, but the average cost of home as of last year was 146.40, but that was again, as of 2020, as of 2021, it's been absolutely crazy. We've seen such a high demand in, in homes, especially here in San Antonio, that prices have gone up. So um, this is just according to national averages and what I've been researching, um, everything that I do, I do make sure that I get to the right resources so that it's all pretty legit. Um, that being said, just from what I've seen in the last, this first quarter of the first uh, of, of the year has just been like really crazy. So um, average cost of home right now, as far as new construction goes, we're seeing it anywhere from 260 to 270. Again, that's new construction. We can still find existing homes that will be cheaper, um, but I will give you some advice and just tell you that if you decide to go with an, a used home or a pre-owned home, you're gonna wanna go at least 20,000 below what your max budget is. So let's say your max budget's gonna be 200. We're gonna to wanna to look at something in the price range about 180. Um, will we find houses at 146, 400, right? I, we can, but I'm gonna be very honest with you. It's probably gonna be a fixer up or something that needs some work on it. Um, if that's kind of what you're looking for, then you are looking in the right place. But again, average cost of home as of 2020 is 146, 400. We won't have the stats on average cost of home for 2021 until this year is over. So just um, hang tight and keep on watching these videos and I will give you guys updates as things come in and as really like the market shifts. So um, with that being said, um, I'm gonna go into the average cost of rentals, which would be like an apartment, your standard two bedroom apartment. You're gonna run anywhere from four um, I'm sorry, for anywhere from $9.92 to $14.99 a month. Um, again, this really just all depends on like your location. Like if you're gonna be somewhere like, let's say downtown, Southtown, or somewhere in Stone Oak, you're gonna really expect to pay the higher end of it, like the $14.99 in your rental. Whereas if you're in the Alamo Ranch area, you probably would be able to find something about in the $999 uh, monthly rent kind of, budget um it, again everything is about location here and where your your apartment is or where your future like home purchase is everything location is everything here so um 
And then the median household income we're seeing right now, again, this is as of 2020, things are changing pretty quickly, but average household income is $52,455. Um, I will tell you guys, just because I have worked with a lot of people from out of state who um, due to the pandemic had started working from home, a lot of employers are allowing their employees to relocate to whatever city or state that they want to live in and be able to work remotely and keep that same job. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen any of the other videos that I've had before, but just to also remind you guys that Texas does not have state income tax. So keeping your employment in California, but living in Texas, you will not have to worry about your state income tax being paid. So essentially it's just more money in your pocket. So just something to keep in mind is reach out to your employer, see if they're willing to allow you to work remotely from San Antonio or whatever city you want to relocate to. Um, and if not, then there are a ton of job opportunities here in San Antonio as well. We have a lot of these Silicon Valley tech companies that are moving to the area, that are moving from California to Austin, um, between Austin, New Braunfels, San Antonio. We have so many just job opportunities that are coming up here. So. That's also a huge perk for you guys. Um, so I also wanted to tell, talk to you a little bit about the cost of groceries because I know um, a couple of my clients have said like, okay, the cost of groceries is like really like ridiculously expensive compared to where they live. Um, I don't know if it's just because of our grocery stores or HEB is just one of our main um, grocery stores here in Texas. I have no idea why it's so much cheaper, but it is. Um, after conversations I've had with, again, families from California, New Mexico, I mean, they're pretty much just like impressed at um, the cost of groceries. And for us, I mean, just depending on what we're wanting to do every night, like I don't, I'm Hispanic, but I don't like to make these like five course meals all the time or make a bunch of food. Like I don't know how to cook for just like two people. I cook for like 10 people. Um, but I do have a larger family, but just that being said, we can have like a spaghetti night, um, like a basic night. That's kind of like five days out of the week for us. Um, I'll do, we'll have spaghetti nights. And I think the most I've spent on spaghetti is like maybe 20 bucks. And that's like throwing in some bread also. So this just kind of gives you like an understanding of like how much groceries or how far like your money gets you at the grocery store here. But I'm going to give you like a really quick breakdown of just a, like a basic list, like your cost of a gallon of milk is $3.38 and a dozen and a half of eggs is going to be $1.82. Your meat, ground meat would be a pound of it for $3.08 and then we have um, a pound of chicken for $2.56 and then your loaf of bread is about $1.63. So that's pretty good. Again, I've um, had tons of conversations with people from all over the country who come and visit and end up deciding that they want to be here. Um, of course we love our local grocery stores. So I think so many of us talk about it, um, about HEB and everyone seems to go visit and they all love it and they love the, you know, price of groceries out here too. So that's also a pretty good thing to keep in mind is that the groceries are going to be a lot cheaper out here than I'm sure anywhere else in the country. Um, and then the, um, going to go over the cost of gas per gallon as of Today, we're sitting at $2.45 per gallon, which is, again, pretty awesome because I think I've seen something like in California it being like $4 and change or $3 and change. So it's pretty good. We're still, we're still, um, we're still pretty good, but like, I mean, I think it's, it's gone up for sure from what it was at the beginning of the year, but I'm not complaining because I'm not paying $4 a gallon either. And I basically live in my car with work. So I, I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know, you have to, you have to do it. So <laughs> that's what it is what it is. Um, so again, I'm going to go into the cost of utilities because this is also super important with considering your move to San Antonio. Um, as of this week or last week, really, um, the cost per kilowatt for your electricity is seven cents per kilowatt. Um, the only, I, I mean, I don't know how many of y'all watched the news during our um, winter storm that we had with CPS and all of the drama, but that they're the only ones that we have to use here. Um, we have not had any issues since, so just rest assured that it will be okay. Um, 
as far as that goes. But yeah, so we're seeing right now it's seven cents per kilowatt. And then your gallon of water is gonna be nine cents per every hundred gallons of water used, which um, again, I don't really know like what other countries, I'm sorry, other states are seeing as far as the average cost of water and all of that. But our utility bills will run um, in the summer which is probably like summer, eight months out of the year here, we will see like the highest light bill that we've had in our, in our home since we've moved in was about $300, which is pretty good because we run the AC like at 68 at night and my fiance likes to freeze me. Um, before we, when we first started dating, like I just did not, I could not like adapt to that. And now I'm like the one complaining, like, is it, what, what's the temperature on? And so just kind of funny now, like I've been able to adapt to it and now I complain about it when it's not freezing in the house. Um, but that just like to give you an idea. And then as far as like our water bill goes, it really just depends um, probably anywhere from like 100 to like 120 bucks a month on water. And that would be like a higher usage. And we have like an irrigation system and all that stuff. So all of that comes to play with um, how much water and the usage in your bill and all that goes. Um, as far as our internet goes, we do have AT&T Fiber, which is what something we love the most. Um, we used to have Time Warner cable, and I thought Time Warner was like a thing all over the country, and apparently it seems like it's just a Texas thing. So if you see anything about Time Warner and wanting to um, potentially get them for internet, I won't discourage you, but I will just let you know we have not had any issues with AT&T Fiber, and we have kids that um, homeschooled or did, yeah, like the social distancing, like homeschooling thing for a while here. And between myself, my fiance, the kids on their computers and then the twins on their iPads, like we didn't really have any issues with internet at that point. So it's been pretty good um, having that. Um, and then your, a cost, let's say of a, of a pizza is gonna be about $10 per pizza. And really just depending if you're gonna go somewhere a little bit nicer, then your pizza will be more expensive, but just to kind of give you an understanding, it's about $10 per pizza. Now, if you're doing DoorDash or you're doing Uber Eats, get ready for your pizza to cost like $20, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so that's just your average cost of your pizza. Now for a like sit down meal um, per person or per adult, you're gonna expect to pay anywhere from 12 to $14 per person. Um, obviously not like including your drinks or anything. And if you're anything like um, Andrew and I, we love to go have dinner and we'll sit there for a little while and we'll have some margaritas or we'll have some kind of like adult beverage. Um, I don't think we've ever gone to a restaurant and like not had a drink. Like, and lately we've been on like this margarita kick, um, frozen margaritas, yeah, it's been, it's been kind of like a, every time we go out to eat, we have some kind of cocktail, um, but yes, average cost of meal per adult in a sit-down restaurant is anywhere from 12 to $14. Um, your vehicle insurance, it's really also going to vary or depend on your driving record. Um, and it's going to range anywhere from about $150 to $200 a month per vehicle. Um, I will tell you, I had a fender bender a few years ago and I do pay $148.50 and that's through like Geico. Um, but that's been a while since I've had that fender bender. Um, but yeah, that's just what I've been paying. I've been paying that same amount for years when I had that whole little accident. My insurance did not increase, which I was really surprised because I thought it would, but I didn't see any kind of increase in the insurance. So that was a huge perk. Um, and then your cost of your healthcare, it really, again, just depends on your age, your, like your health, do you have any like other medical issues or like what's your medical history, all of that. So I got insurance um, privately on my own because with I'm self-employed at this point and I'm paying two, two, what, what am I paying? 265 a month for dental vision and health. Um, and that's just me, but most employers here do offer insurance. Um, the other types of programs to consider is um, we do have state benefits as far as uh, Medicaid, Medicare, all of those good things, but they're all gonna be income-based and depending on how big your household is or your how many kids you have and all that, all those things are gonna be considered, but it's just something to consider that, or just to know like you do have 
Medicare and Medicaid for elderly people if you have Medicare and then if they need Medicaid then Medicaid will um, kick in and help them out as well. Um, again, I mean it just really all just depends on your income but as far as insurance goes there's a ton of options um, with your employer and the state. So that's going to be just something I wanted to share with you guys because I've had quite a few people ask me about um, benefits and like what kind of government benefits do we offer. So just wanted to go over those really quick with you. Um, we do have public transportation. So if you don't have a vehicle or you're just kind of used to living in a city where you have a lot of um, transportation or public transportation with the city, um, again, San Antonio is just pretty large. It's going to be more in like the metro areas that you're going to be able to get yourself that like transportation from the city or the public transportation. They do have bus passes. The it's the via they're called via VIA like via bus passes, and you pay um, for the pass. It's a uh, thirty eight dollars for thirty one days. So I thought that was pretty good. It's a pretty fair price compared to Lyft and Uber. Like I mean, it's pretty expensive to ride on those whenever you need to, but they are available here in San Antonio as well. So don't drink and drive, just get yourself an Uber instead. Um, this is also really important because I do have kids um, and childcare can get pricey. Um, I do have three kids. I have two full timers in daycare and then I have one of them that would go after school to daycare as well. So your average cost of daycare will be anywhere around 350 to 400 um, per, per child. Um, they do give you discounts like for any additional like siblings and things like that. But again, it's all going to really just depend on your, um, the location, you know, you're going to be in Stone Oak. It's going to be more expensive where if we come out to Alamo Ranch. It may not be as expensive. We drive over to Converse. It may be cheaper than it is in Alamo Ranch. So it just really depends on the location and what exactly you're really wanting to look for as far as for childcare goes. I will tell you also though that if you qualify, the state does have some benefits to help you pay for childcare, but again, it's gonna all be income-based. So that's just another thing to keep in mind is that we do have state benefits to help you out with childcare if needed. Um, and I believe that was everything that I had listed here. If I didn't ask any, if I, I'm sorry, if I didn't answer some of the questions that you might have, be sure to reach out to me again, whatever you guys need, I'm here for y'all. Um, Make sure that if you haven't checked out some of my other videos, you check those out as well. I have a couple of home tours and just really more information for you to know what the city's like. And I, I love to do these educational videos for you guys because I think it's like super important to keep everyone informed, especially when you're making such a huge move, whether it's from within Texas or you're moving from out of state. I think it's super important to just like educate everyone and that's what I love to do the most. That is exactly why I even came into this industry is because I love to educate people um, about the market. Um, I do want to touch on one more thing though. Um, there is this crazy shortage of new construction inventory. So if you are really considering moving out here sooner, um, be sure to reach out to either myself or another realtor to help you kind of navigate through this because again, we're seeing this like massive demand of new construction. Um, and then we're seeing somewhat of a bidding war here in San Antonio, but um, I think sellers are getting overwhelmed with the amount of offers that they're seeing with the existing side where with the new construction side, we're still able to go in and possibly select a lot to do a dirt build on or possibly select an inventory style home um, and go ahead and make that offer on the home at that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever you guys need at this point, um, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it through the very end, again, I appreciate you guys for reaching out. And if you have any questions about anything else, um, about San Antonio or anything that I went over, just be sure to reach out to me. Again, shoot me, shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email, slide into my DMs, however you wanna get a hold of me. I've got your back when moving to San Antonio. I will see you guys next week.